I promise. <laughs> We're going to have the best blooper reel. All right. Seriously. Okay, together, together. Okay. You ready? Hi, everybody. My name is Amanda Haynes. And this is Nicole Perpelon, and we are with the Mellow Group at Preferred Real Estate Brokers. And today we're going to talk to you about how to have a successful open house. So there's a lot of um, things that a realtor needs to do and also the seller needs to do as well. So it's important when you have an open house that you're not home. It makes the buyers uncomfortable. Um, you may not like some of the things you have heard people say about your home and it's just much more comfortable situation if yeah. you're gone and they can take their time, look at the home, not feel like they're intruding in your life. Um, Absolutely. I think comfort is number one, right? So you want a potential buyer to feel comfortable and it'll be much more difficult for them to feel comfortable if you're there. So take a break, go take a walk, maybe go have a lunch. If you have a pet, make sure you put them away, keep Absolutely. them with you on your walk. Um, not everyone's a pet lover and you just want to make sure when you do start preparing your home, you shampoo the carpets, you know, get rid of any evidence that a pet may be there, touch up paint, so on. Um, what do you think? I definitely think what, you're, what you have touched on is, you know, shampooing carpets, making your home presentable, making it clean. And curb appeal. And curb That's appeal. That's huge. Yeah, right? Because what do most people do before they even reach out to their real estate agent? Sometimes they drive past the house to see the neighborhood, to see the home itself, mm -hmm. and they might drive by and say, oh, never mind, I don't even want to come inside. And you might have the most beautiful layout in and options and upgrades inside the home, but if they don't like if the outside. If the not mowed, you know, you might want to plant some fresh, colorful flowers by the front door, get a new doormat. Curb appeal is everything. That's what draws people to come and want to see the inside. Um, yeah, no, that's big. Yeah. And then when you have hired your realtor, you want to make sure that they have a professional camera, not using yes. a cell phone. No cell phone pics. <laughs> no. Toilet seats are down. Yes. You know, a nice soft music in the background, lights. All that makes a huge difference. Yeah, something they could imagine themselves living in. Mm -hmm. So, Amanda, tell me, what do you think about the communication that a seller needs to have with their agent about like showing times and when they're available or how they want to handle people coming into their home? Right. Well, I mean, we're always here. If you like text better than email or phone calls, we do whatever's right and whatever's best for you. But when there is a showing request, we reach out to you, make sure we let you know, hey, it's five o'clock tomorrow, okay? That way you have time to prepare, leave your home. And sometimes we get short notice. Very um, short notice, yeah. But, but that is something that we will reach out to you and make sure that we have confirmed that it's all right, that it showed. So I've heard different opinions about keeping your pictures up and putting your pictures down or things that are personal to you. The personal items. What yes. do you think? I think the closest you can have it look to a model home, the best. Um, we're in model homes all the time. I picture myself living in all of them because <laughs> <laughs> it's just yeah. moving ready and I can see myself there. But when you start personalizing it, um, some people don't have as good of imagination and they might just not feel like they can see themselves there simply because there's thousands of pictures all over the wall of someone else's family. Absolutely. So declutter and depersonalization mm -hmm. is really what we recommend um, for our clients. Exactly. That's, that's a good one. So we talked about curb appeal. We talked about pets. Personalized. We talked about depersonalizing, decluttering. We Photos. talked about not being there during the open house. And then when we do have the open house, yeah. signs. We put signs up at every corner, at every intersection. Um, sometimes they do get pulled up, <laughs> but we do put a lot of signs out. Um, door knocking. Yes. We let neighbors know, hey, in a couple of days, there's gonna be an open house. If they're not interested in buying a home, they may know somebody that is. You just wanna let anybody and everybody know, 
hey, there's an open house. This time, this place, we advertise. Oh, you're probably watching us right now on some form of social media, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube. We are on all of those. We're even on Pinterest and LinkedIn. We're everywhere. So when we do our open houses, I know that we we create an event on Facebook. We advertise it. Our group that we're in, we spend tens of thousands of dollars every year in social media marketing. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you hire one of us to sell your home, we are putting all of that force behind marketing your home and making sure that it gets out to the right person, especially with the open houses. And we have an English and a Spanish page. Yes. So we're hitting a lot of people. A lot of communities. People that are interested in buying in that area. So Absolutely. you definitely get the traffic that you're looking for. Yeah. Um, so. That's great. I, I think, think we've hit just about every topic. I think so. okay. We're going to have a bloopers reel. You know that, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid of it. <laughs> it was my See, look. Like, here they are. Yeah, you see, this is why. This is why we can't we can't get any work done. We try. That's all.